Good morning. Welcome everyone to Williams. Good to see everyone here. Um, let me see your smiles. Quickly find two people to smile at this morning. All right, everyone grab your bulletins and open them up. And if you're a visitor, if you could open up to the very back of the bulletin, there's a little half sheet of paper. Um, it's for you visitors to fill out just your information about yourself so we could have a record of your visit and then you can put that in the offering plate when you're finished. Now before we go over some of the announcements in the bulletin, there are some handsome men coming up here with some announcements they have for themselves. So I'm going to let Al go first and then Mr. Hedge, okay? Just wanted to um, remind you, for the last uh, few weeks, we've been making some informal announcements from uh, up here to bull, uh, the pul pulpit. And in our Sunday school classes about the uh, financial stewardship pledge, uh, hopefully you've all received one of these pledge cards. If, if not, there are uh, some out there in the foyer. Uh, the biggest thing, we just want to keep this uh, on the forefront of your thinking, make sure that everybody has a chance to prayerfully consider their givings uh, to the church to... Uh, not only to support the ministry of the church, but to help to retire the debt on our CMC. So uh, just, just a reminder, uh, if you've got any questions or concerns, comments, uh, the, the committee is myself, Brent Thomas, Lamar Freeman, Matt Whitaker, and Allison Ostrander. Thanks. Good morning. Just want to give a little reminder of our, we're going to have a special called uh, business meeting um, next Sunday after the service to approve the 2014 church budget and um, I would just encourage you to, to get a copy of it. It should be in the pews and in the, in the foyer. Um, if you have any questions, let the, one of the finance committee members know. We'll be glad to try to answer those. And um, I appreciate all the, the work that um, all the committee members did to um, send the request in. Uh, it took a lot of time. appreciate that. And also the finance committee for um, completing the budget. Thank you. Thank you, men. All right, a couple of things going on today. Of course, today we're here for a very special Sunday for Hanging of the Green, which we decked this place out in red, and I love it. Beautiful. So um, I hope you're excited and prepared for their service this morning. But there's some other things going on today and this week. Um, make sure that you know there's um, just a couple of groups meeting tonight, and you should know, and then if your group is meeting at 6, and the youth will be meeting at 6, and then the kids will have their activities at 6 o'clock tonight. And youth, we will have snack at the Dempsey's tonight after church, okay? And um, there's a lot of announcements within the bulletin. Make sure you read over it. But one thing you need to know is Wednesday night, make sure you come back for supper. The menu is in the bulletin. But also, we're going to all get together as a church and go caroling at the nursing home in Jacksonville. See some of our friends there. So if it does not matter if you can sing. It just doesn't matter. Come and make a joyful noise for these people because they love to have visitors. And we're going to do that at 6.30 on Wednesday. Okay? Again, welcome. And so now you need to find someone that you didn't smile at earlier, and you get to hug this person's neck or kiss them on the cheek or just say good morning and shake their hand, okay? Go for it. Well, good morning again, Williams, and Happy New Year. I didn't have a stroke. Uh, today is actually the first day of the Christian year, the Christian calendar. The first Sunday of Advent is the first day of the Christian year, so 
Happy New Year to you. And what a way to celebrate as we're here for the Hanging of the Green. Uh, I have one just one sort of housekeeping announcement about our evening time. Discipleship groups have kind of wrapped up. I think there are a few that might still be meeting. Mine, uh, we've wrapped up. I think the missions group has wrapped up. Um, those will be kind of finishing up this month. And then in January, on Sunday nights, we're going to have a January Bible study here in the sanctuary through the book of James. Uh, but in that time, if you're thinking, hey, you know, here's something I, w I wish we would have done as a discipleship group, those are going to start back in February. So if you have an idea for something, or you might want to bounce something off me or something like that, uh, let me know. And also, if you're in a group that had a book assigned to you, if you could get those back to the church office or back to your group leader, because some of these groups will be doing again in the spring, and we'll, we'll need those books back. So just a little uh, heads up about that. So um, Again, it's good to see you all here this morning on this first Sunday of Advent for the Hanging of the Green. And as we've come together for worship, let us begin with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, as we have gathered here in this room on this first day of a season of anticipation, after having spent time with family and friends giving thanks. Lord, we pray that our hearts may be open to your spirit, open to your moving in our midst this morning. And Lord, we just pray that as we've gathered here for this special service, Lord, that we will take in everything that we see, everything that we hear, and that our hope and anticipation of your coming will grow. So Lord, be with us in this time. Bless our time together as we worship you here in this place on this day. It's in your holy name, the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. The four candles of the Advent wreath represent the four weeks of Advent, a season of anticipation as we look forward to the arrival of Christ. The weekly lighting of the candles commemorates the hope, peace, joy, and love that came with Jesus' first Advent two millennia ago and it symbolizes our present hope and anticipation of Jesus' second advent, when he will return to judge the living and the dead. 
With each week, the light becomes brighter and culminates on Christmas Eve with the lighting of the Christ candle in the center, which represents Jesus Christ as the light of the world. child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulder, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the first Sunday of the Advent season. Once more, we get the opportunity to begin again. Advent has its roots in the Latin word for coming. In this season, we proclaim the coming of Christ in the birth of Jesus, in the word and spirit, and in the final victory when <coughs> God's kingdom shall be complete. Today, we light the candle of hope. We are reminded that the people of Israel had hope in the coming of the Messiah, and it's always true, hope is God is fulfilled. The Christian hope finds its fulfillment in the babe of Bethlehem. So we look forward to the soon coming day when we shall celebrate his birth. Let us pray. O oh God, help us this Advent to be grateful for your promises that have been so richly fulfilled. May we ever see more clearly each day the degree to which the glory of your redeemed creation fills this earth. May we appreciate more fully your gifts of nature, grace, that help us to live securely in this passing world. Yet may your gracious gift never lull us into false expectations. You don't promise that everything will be easy. You don't, you don't promise heaven on earth. The promise that your redeemed children would dwell securely means rather that we are given the faith and hope that we need to pass through this troubled world confidently. Thank you for the gift of faith and hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
the Baals. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Psalms 24:10. Baals have been used throughout the centuries to call people to worship or to bring them news. When heirs to royalty were born, bells would ring. When wars were ended, people would celebrate by ringing church bells. Today, bells ring to remind us of the celebration ahead, the coming of the king's heir, the prince of peace, our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning. Merry Christmas to you. It's going to be a great day. I will tell you this. You can't celebrate Christmas with a frown on your face. Okay? I want you to smile today. These are Christmas carols. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, 96.5. He's been playing them for six months now. <laughs> all day and all night. When I get in my car, that's all I hear. Please join us as we share Christmas carols starting today through, through the whole year. It's about him. It's not about us, but it is the wonderful time of the year. Come on, ring those bells. 153. Very short. We'll see. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, Judah territory, this was during Herod's kingship, a band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on a pilgrimage to worship him. Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through 2. Throughout the ages, people have wondered about the mysterious star. Some say it was Halley's Comet, others say it was a joining of two stars or planets. The Bible tells us that the Bethlehem star is a symbol of new birth and a new promise that changed history. The star represents the true light that shines in the darkness and cannot be put out. Each night of Advent, when you see the stars in the sky, remember the night of the light of the world, our Savior Jesus Christ was born. <clears throat> star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Offer to a carol for the morning is 148, O Holy Night. I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to sing all three stanzas. Join us, please, as we sing. 148.
as we come to the time of, to give our offering, help us to be cheerful givers of all that you have given to us. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir. Sounded good back there. <laughs> Come on, give it up. <laughs> Mary, did you know? Amen. Let us stand for the singing of a doxology, please. Praise God from whom all.
Let's continue our caroling. 145, oh, come all you faithful. 145. Let's just sing all three standards. You know it and enjoy it. You remain seated on this hymn if you'd like to. Come let us adore him. Jesus Christ the Lord. Good morning. I think some of us are sleepy heads. Did we eat too much turkey on Thursday and we're still sleeping? No. What is today? Do you know what today is? It's the first day of what? Of December. And we're starting the what season, Jack? The Advent season. And what are we celebrating in December? Christmas. Christmas. And what's Christmas about? Jesus' birthday. Jesus' birthday. Who was born? Jesus, well, guess what? Today we're going to talk about the nativity scene. Do y'all have a nativity scene at home? No? Nobody has a nativity scene? Y'all don't have Jesus in a manger at your house? Mm. Well, you do, Spencer? Uh, just a toy one. Just a toy one. That works. Um, on Luke 2.12, we were told this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Who was that baby lying in a manger? Jesus. Jesus. And that was our gift from God. Now, he was our gift to the entire world that we may be saved. And who was there? Who was at the manger? Do y'all remember who came? Who was there, Sam? You'll help us out. The shepherds. The shepherds. Who else? Were there some animals? 
And then there were some animals. And they greeted Jesus. And what did they bring him? I know you've been talking about it, Spencer. What did they bring Jesus? They brought him what? Gold. They brought him gold. They brought him gifts, didn't they? Yeah. Now, and that was the setting that God chose for us. Now, today, guess what you get to do? What? You get to help set out the nativity scene. And as you set out the nativity scene, everybody's going to think about where is Jesus' place in our hearts? And what place do we reserve for Jesus? And we're going to be very, very careful because guess what? We're going to place it with the real live nativity scene. And we got to be very careful because those pieces are breakable. So do we all need to rush it at one time? No. We're going to be very, very gentle. But you get to take the pieces and you get to place it where you think they would be in the nativity scene. Can y'all do that? Yeah. And as they do that, adults, we're going to think about what place have we reserved for Jesus this holiday season and to make sure that our focus is to, go, to be on Jesus this holiday season when the rush and the craziness of life gets to us to make sure we keep that little spot for Jesus and remember really why we celebrate. Y'all come get some pieces. While they're, while they're doing it, let's do 157, Away in a Manger. You can remain seated on this carol. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 The greenery that decorates our church sanctuary is patterned after evergreen branches. The evergreen is not a seasonal plant. It does not wither and die in fall as other plants do. This greenery symbolizes the eternal love of God has for all of us. God's love will never die and nothing can separate us from his love. It also represents the eternal life offered to us in the Lordship of Christ. When we see the evergreens, let us rejoice in the love of God that gives us peace for today and hope for tomorrow. And that's Carol, 136, the first Noel. We'll ask you to stand on there. We'll sing the first and last stanzas of 136. Choir, you're
my Santa, please. Poinsettias. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. John 15, 13. The most popular flower of the Advent Christmas season is the bright red poinsettia. This flower of red, green, pink, and white has a way of lifting spirits. The poinsettia was found growing in Mexico by Dr. Joel Poinsett who introduced it to the United States in 1828. Its association with Christmas began in the 16th century Mexico, where legends tell of a young girl who was too poor to provide a gift for the celebration of Jesus' birthday. The tale goes that the child was inspired by an angel to gather weeds from the roadside and place them in front of the church altar. Crimson blossoms sprouted from the weeds and became the beautiful poinsettia. This flower symbolizes many things for us today. The star-shaped leaves remind us of the star seen at Jesus' birth. The red color reminds us of the blood shed by the innocent children killed in Bethlehem by Herod's soldiers. It also reminds us of the blood the babe of Bethlehem will shed on the cross of Calvary as an adult. May the poinsettia in our sanctuary help us to remember the salvation and the love God sent to us in Jesus. May we also be inspired to give our best to God. Those who follow the Lord are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. Psalms 1-3. According to one legend, the reformer Martin Luther is credited with popularizing the Christmas tree. One winter's night, as he walked through the woods, he saw the stars shining through the branches of the trees. They seemed to him as diamonds sparkling on the branches. To share his feelings of God's majesty in creation, he brought one tree home and tied candles to its branches. Martin Luther and his family thanked God for the gifts of lice as they stood before the tree. Today the Christmas tree is an important symbol to which to decorate our church. The tree reminds us to be rooted in the faith. It also reminds us to bear fruit as disciples of Christ. The Lord be with you. As you're turning in your Bible to Matthew chapter 24, I want you to note that the title of the sermon is an unexpected hour. That is the title, not the description of the sermon this morning. Some of you have asked that. And, uh, yeah, some of you are catching it now. Yeah, yeah. It won't be 60 minutes long. Yeah, I mean, unless something happens. Um, as you turn there, I want you to look around at this room. Look at the greenery, the trees, the lights, the candles. But also look at the people who are sitting next to you, behind you, around you, across the room from you. This, this place this morning has been prepared for the arrival of the Christ child. And it's symbolic, really. I mean, we know that these things we've hung here for this season... 
but it's symbolic that says to us to prepare our hearts for the arrival of the Christ child and the eventual arrival of Christ himself. Advent is a time where we look forward with hope, with love, with joy, with peace to the coming of Christ on Christmas. But as Christians who live now two millennia removed from that first Advent, we also look forward to Christ's second Advent, the second coming of Jesus. And so in this season, as we prepare our hearts for Christ's birth, may we also prepare our hearts and ourselves for Christ's eventual coming. For it could come at any day, at any hour, even an unexpected hour. So hear these words from Matthew's Gospel, the 24th chapter, verses 36 through 44. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they do nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore. For you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Would you pray with me? Eternal God, as we have gathered here in celebration and anticipation, Lord, we know that you have come to save us from our sins, from ourself. And Lord, as we celebrate Christmas, may we be reminded as we draw closer that each day, each week as we light a candle, that Lord, we are not counting down shopping days. Lord, we are counting down days when we draw closer to your arrival. And even when this season is over, when the greenery is packed away, when the tree is put up, and the nativity scene is stored for next year, may we still light a candle in our hearts each day as we draw closer to your arrival. So Lord, as we are in this place, God, we thank you for a, a room, a church where we can come and worship thankful for those who are here, Lord, may you bless them. Bless those who are still traveling from the holidays, Lord, bless those who are unable to be with us, God, bless those and heal those who are sick. And Lord, speak to us, if only for a moment this morning, as we hear from Holy Scripture and prepare our hearts. And may they be your words that we hear and not mine. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Just over 2,000 years ago, people were waiting. People were waiting. They were looking in the sky. They were seeing the stars. They were scouring the pages of Scripture. For centuries, people had been waiting. And some of those people thought they had it all figured out. Some of those people knew exactly what it was going to be like when the Messiah came. They knew it. I mean, they, they would tell you. They said, we've got it. We figured it out. Here are all the prophecies. Here are the scriptures. This is what the Messiah is going to be. He's going to come in and take over. When the Messiah gets here, he's going to drive out Rome. Israel's going to be good again. Israel's going to be big again. When the Messiah gets here, this is what it's going to look like. He's going to come with a sword in his hand, ready to go. And some people like that showed up on the scene. And some of them were successful, like Judas Maccabeus. He drove Rome out of the temple, out of Jerusalem, if only for a season of history. And some people said, there he is. That's the Messiah. But it didn't last long. 
There were others who came in and they fit every little description of the prophecies that all of these really smart people for hundreds of years said, that's it, that's the guy, that's the Messiah, and they were all wrong. Because in some little backwater hamlet named Nazareth, a teenage mother, a teenage girl, a virgin, got a vision, a visitation from an angel, and was told that God had a message. Now the message wasn't, Mary, you've been real sweet, you've been real nice, you love the Lord, you have perfect attendance in Sunday school, and so God's going to bless you with financial wealth and growth. No, that wasn't the message. The message wasn't, Mary, you've been a, a good girl, you've gone to church every Sunday, you've done all the right things, you know all the right people, so Mary, God's going to bless you with peace and a spirit and feeling of contentment. That wasn't the message. The message to Mary, probably no younger or older than 15 years old, was, Mary, you're pregnant, and God God is the father of that child. In an era and a culture of shame and honor, this teenage girl had to go and tell her parents, tell their, the one to whom she was betrothed, a man old enough to be her father, I'm pregnant. Not a good message, not a good way to start things off. But Joseph had a dream. God told him to be faithful. And then in Bethlehem, the city of David, a baby was born. It didn't make the front page of the papers. It wasn't a big shout-out. It wasn't all over Twitter. It wasn't, there weren't pictures posted on Facebook with some hashtag, Messiah born. No. The baby was born in a stable, in a cave in the backyard barn of some inn in Bethlehem. There were some angels there some shepherds, but it wasn't really a big fuss for a lot of people. Mark, in his gospel, skips all this stuff that we talk about in this season. His advent of Christ is when he shows up on the banks of the Jordan River. There are people there. His cousin John baptizes Jesus. It doesn't really make the papers. People aren't going, there he is. It's what the prophet said. There's the Messiah. In fact, when he hung upon the cross and breathed his last, people said, yep, so much for a Messiah. And even when he came back on Easter morning, there were still some who said, well, that's not the Messiah. And today, as we celebrate Advent, as we look forward to Christmas, we look forward to Christ's second arrival, and there are people who like those prophets and scribes of old say, we've got it all figured out. This is what Jesus' second coming is going to look like. They write books about it. They make millions of dollars about it. They say, this, this is what the second arrival of Jesus is going to be. So be ready when you start to see these signs, when you start to see these stars, when you start to hear these things. It's happening. It's coming. And I can't help but wonder, as we prepare ourselves in this season, if maybe we ought to take a lesson from those who missed him the first time. If maybe we ought to take a lesson from those who missed the first arrival of the Christ child. To hear these words from Jesus. About that day and hour, no one knows. Not the angels in heaven. Not even the Son, not even Jesus at the time He walked the earth knew. Only the Father. So who are we to think that we know any better? And so Jesus says in that last verse, You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. As we prepare our hearts for Christmas, as we prepare our sanctuary, our homes as we compile lists, as we make plans, as we do all the things that come with the holidays. May we also prepare ourselves every day for the arrival of Christ. For it may be now. It may be a thousand years from now. It may be tomorrow. But one thing is for certain. 
It is going to be at an unexpected hour. So as we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of hope, let us hear that not as a frightening bit of news that Jesus might show up and catch us off guard, but let's hear those words as words that drive us to hope. Words that say, Christ is coming soon, and I hope I'm ready. I want to be ready to live each day as if it were, in fact, my last. For Christ is coming at an unexpected hour. I'll leave you with these words uh, from a song back in the 90s, and I'm not going to sing it, so you can go ahead and breathe a sigh of relief. There's a man named Colin Ray. Uh, I don't know if he's really popular much anymore, but... Some people know him, okay. Now, Kyle Ray sang a song back in the 90s called, What If Jesus Comes Back Like That? Any of you heard that song before? I love it. He talks about in one verse, like, what if he comes back like a hobo, like a homeless man? What if he comes back like a baby hooked on crack? What if Jesus comes back like that? Will we let him in or turn our backs? What if Jesus comes back like that? So as we celebrate this season, as we prepare ourselves for Christ's arrival, I hope we'll remember those words. That Jesus is coming at an unexpected hour. And he may be coming in an unexpected way. Will you be ready? Will your heart be prepared for the arrival of the Christ child? As we celebrate Advent, as we look forward to Christ's arrival and to his second coming. Would you stand as we are dismissed from this place this morning? And as you go forth, look around, observe this room, prepare your hearts, and remember, we're heading now toward the cradle, and heading now toward that unexpected hour. Let us pray together as we're dismissed. Eternal God, go with us from this place. Fill our hearts with hope and expectation, and prepare us, Lord for that unexpected hour. In Christ's name we pray, amen.